Okay, so we have the three minors here, the uh, Phrygian, the Aeolian, and the Dorian. In that stack we were talking about, they're the three, the six, and the two. That's where they begin, uh, where you begin the, the modal shapes, you know, the, the, um, the G shape, the, the D shape, and the, uh, let's see, the other minor would be um, the C shape, actually, is, is the Phrygian minor shape. So we got these three minors here. I don't want you to worry about my <clears throat> my uh, computer browser thing, you know, where my stuff is, but, um, so, <clears throat> don't let that confuse you. C minor, we got C minor as the uh, sixth of E, e flat, we got C minor as the second of B flat, and we got C minor as the third of A flat, so C minor, as the sixth of E flat is is this, and then C minor as the second of B flat is, and then C minor as the third of A flat is, and that's that that's the Phrygian. All right, so in the key of C, the Phrygian is, all right, and that's the one we actually use that pentatonic for our C. All right, I could do it from here. Remember, you can always start a pentatonic from any string, but you got to adjust for the warp. And then come back down on what shape it makes. It made an E shape. So start a C pentatonic from an, from the second string it makes an E shape <clears throat> you know you just come back down on what shape it ends up making that's why it's important to know the pattern not worry about the actual shape until you hit the warp if you're gonna do it you know, you know but once you know the once you know the the caged pattern of C or D or, or E you don't have to think of it in terms of S3S and S2L. That you do if you're playing, you don't care what cage, where you're at. You just play the pattern, it works every time. Okay? The S2L and the S3L are like all the white keys. So I could start on any white key, you know, and if I start on the second, which is the S3S starts on the second, and the S2L starts on the third, right? And just follow like a pentatonic or even diatonic. So it would be three, four, five, six, seven root. Okay, and then the S2L goes two, three, four, five, six, seven root two. So it'd be like just playing if somebody was playing in C, you know, something like. Just go. Okay. And then you go into an S2L. I can't do that right now because I had to concentrate on doing the S3L, the S2Ls there. But you can use your knowledge of the cage system so that you know pretty much where it's going to go. So if I want to start a D from string 2, okay, it doesn't matter what key, but I'm going to do it in, in the key of C anyway because I got a D right here just so 
I don't mess up. So you know the D shape goes like this. But you're not gonna get you're not gonna get that familiar with the with the root and the lead there. The, you're not gonna get this D shape anymore. But I'm just gonna start that D shape and pretend I can play it right up there. Now I'm not with the warp I have to warp up that shape. That shape that I already know how to do. Comes a G. And I have that little that little box pattern with the 35, the renderings. And that's what we worked on. So but anyway, that the this is the different minors, okay? Um, and there's three types of minors, but you can extend this idea. It's really easier to extend the idea to in a mode, when you're in a mode, let's say I'm playing uh, in, the, in the key of B flat, anything I play in that B flat, any, you know, any note that I start on, say the E flat, I just follow the B flat up. And that's the Lydian mode, that's the Lydian fourth. So it's, it's more than just the minors, it's also for the fourth and the seventh, you know, and the root. So don't be confused about that, that, you know, hey, there's three kinds of minors, you better know what they are. No, that's not what you need to know. You need to know that within a key, say the key of A, that any chord, scale tone chord you build off of that scale is going to be in, in the A mode. It's going to have its mode. So any of the minor constituents, which would be B minor, okay? So you got C sharp minor. <clears throat> All right, that's going to be the Phrygian minor. And then you got the fourth the fifth and the sixth that's going to be the aeolian the f sharp minor all right if it's if you build a scale tone a minor on that particular and stay in the a scale that's what you need to know you have to stay in the parent scale when you're building a triad off of each of the scale members and they're called scale tone chords and they're that's what they're modal they're different. <clears throat> the F is different from just a fourth. You know, the fourth is different from just a, uh, you know, a regular fourth scale. If you were in the key of A, the fourth would be D. Okay, but to stay in the key of A, you wouldn't just play a D major scale. Because you'd have to follow the A uh, scale tones. So it would be you'd get that augmented fourth characteristic of the Lydian. <clears throat> it's not just the minors. Forget about there's three minors and I have to know how to do that. The minor, the best minor rule to, to keep in mind is that when you're playing a minor chord, say an E minor here, the cage that you put, that you go around it, the E minor has a relative major, which would be G. So, if you take that E shaped G cage and go down one in, in caged, right? Down one in E shape is um, in cage is the G shape. Okay, so you'd play the G there. So E minor shape and G major shape. So you just go, E goes up one to G in a pentatonic scale. So if you're playing an E minor, you play a G over it. If you're playing a D minor, go up one in pentatonic scale to an E. So in, in D minor, one up in pentatonic scale is an E shape. You play an E shape uh, over that. Now the D minor, sorry, I did, that, uh, that wasn't a D minor. This is the D minor I'm talking about. That was an E shaped D minor. I'm talking about a D minor shaped D minor. You would play over that uh, one up on a pentatonic scale. Would